Virginia because there is, uh, it's a classic for dog blend. So it comes from uh, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Petit Verdot. And I call it Four Times Virginia because the four varieties are coming from four different places all over the state. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Virginia Wine TV. And today I am so excited because two of my favorite things in the world, wine and food, we're going to be talking about. So we're here at Potomac Point Winery, and joining me today is winemaker Simone Pachese and Chef Michael Stevenson. Hello. How are you guys? Great. How's it going? So let's talk a little bit about food and wine pairing. That's why we're here today. Um, yeah. Uh, first of all, wine is meant to be drink uh, by eating food. So this is very important when making wine, not just focus on the variety and uh, all concept of adding a structured wine and a pleasant wine. You have always to focus that this wine will be drink with food. So you have to focus on uh, um, balanced wine, uh, first of all. Second of all, pairing with food is um, the, mo the most important thing. So uh, the combination of taste and flavors of the food are interacting with the taste and uh, flavors of the wine itself. Perhaps you will never pair a Petit Verdot with a Calamari, right? Uh, we have we have a fight over there. Yeah, we right. have a two different two different direction. There is no combination. There is no method. And why does it change the flavor of the wine? Uh, well, the most important thing is on the flavor. When we are uh, combining uh, food and wine, flavor is important. But the mm, the role in the game is probably uh, forty percent. Mm -hmm. uh, the sixty percent of the importance is the taste. Mm -hmm. When you compare a very high tanning wine with uh, uh, a food that uh, has no spice, has no uh, enough fat to combine the tanning, then uh, we, have a, uh, we have a contrast, we have a... It clashes your palate. Exactly, yeah. so that's when you get kind of that metally taste in the back sure, of your mouth. Yeah, right. sure. So how do you educate your consumers when yeah. pairing wine and food? How do you do that? Um, our customer, uh, when they come in a tasting room, they have a tasting sheet and they can find uh, on the note uh, the food that we are suggesting uh, to eat, to have with that kind of wine. Uh, other than that, there are some rules, but uh, there is also, a, I mean, everybody can pick actually their own pairing mm -hmm. by knowing more or less what we are suggesting, perhaps. It happens that last year during a, a food pairing event, uh, I was at home, we decided to do some uh, shrimp garlic with butter and the best pairing was a chilled Norton. Whoever can think about that pairing, but it was wonderful. That's why we proposed it to, the, uh, to our customer. So experiment, so mm -hmm. experimentation is the key of everything. There are some key factor that has to be respected. So, Chef, since you are the expert in food, um, tell us what we're going to be tasting today. Well, today, uh, what we're going to do today, and traditionally when we do wine pairings, we usually try to take them from a lighter spectrum to a heavier spectrum. Also, so the palate can actually absorb the different flavor combinations. So, we're going to start with something a little bit lighter, um, a little bit lighter fare, which is our chopped salad here that we do at uh, the Bistro here at Potomac Park Winery. And the, uh, the combinations there are very, very light. It's actually tossed in a Chardonnay vinaigrette with a little lemon essence and extra virgin olive oil. So it's very, very light on the palate and should grow, go great with our first wine selection. And, and what are we drinking first? For first, we will drink uh, the Bionnier uh, 2010. This Bionnier um, come from grape harvested in the southwest Virginia. Uh, Chatham area, a very rich Bionnier, uh, 2010 was a very rich harvest, so high viscosity, high alcohol, high content of aromatics. This specific Bionnier uh, has been awarded in London, we're very proud of it, uh, at the international wine competition with a silver medal, um, and uh, we are currently in the tasting room serving and tasting it. Perfect, so let's, let's try. Very fruity. Perfect temperature. Yes. Just for the record, I haven't had it. Everything here is amazing. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm trying to play catch up right now. <laughs> catch up to his great products that he puts out. They, they picked up the right one. <laughs> catch up, definitely. It's amazing how you can still pick up the notes in the mm -hmm. salad and the food. And I remember we were talking earlier that there's no fruit in here, but the golden beans and the tomatoes actually add a little fruitiness to it. It's wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. And the garbanzo beans in here, there's a parmesan crisp. The lightness of the char uh, you, you said it's a chardonnay and it's mm -hmm. just absolutely fantastic with the wine. You basically taste the wine first and prepare your mouth for the food. Then you eat it and then you wash up mm -hmm. the, the mouth with the, with with the, the wine again. Yes, with the wine again. And you can find that there is a perfect balance. Is everything uh, working well? There is uh, no fire, there is no uh, aftertaste uh, or bite. It's We've well got those wonderful roasted beets in there that are just kind of mild and, and the texture of them goes really well too. Yes. Once again, like I said, no fight in the, between the food and wine. And um, actually, when I come down to his office, you know, he has a little dark office down there in the cave. So I was expecting, you know, a fight when I came down there. But um, like I said, all the wine that he produces here is so amazing. So it's definitely keeping me on my toes. So the balance yes, is just beautiful. It's, it's a lovely <laughs> start. It. It's a lovely start. And definitely a taste that we're going to get into a little progressiveness here. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to our second course. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are we having next? This looks beautiful. Uh, well, we have decided to, um, and we just wanna, you wanna talk about the award we just won? Oh yeah, on this one, yeah, that was for me. This <laughs> the food, the food that's we, distracting you. <laughs> yes, exactly, I was like, what's it bring over here? There is, there is so much flavor coming out of this meat. This wine, uh, first uh, you got uh, another award in London from a uh, uh, decanter wine competition. But second, we're very proud uh, to uh, have been awarded with the gold medal at the um, Governor's Cup mm -hmm. wine competition. And this is part of the 12 bottles on the Governor's case. Uh, the Governor's would uh, basically use this, uh, would showcase these two 12 bottles, the 12 best wine in Virginia, uh, all over the world, uh, wherever he, he will travel. Uh, so definitely for us, it is very important to be sure. there, and uh, we're proud of it. This wine is uh, uh, what I call four times Virginia, mm -hmm. because there is a, it's a classic Bordeaux blend, so it comes from uh, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Petit Bordeaux. Uh -huh. And I call it four times Virginia because the four varieties are coming from four different places all over the state. Um, that makes it complex because it, it, um, it, since in Virginia we have many kind of terroir, we are putting in one bottle many faces and many sides of Commonwealth. And that's why it's uh, very important for us uh, to have this signature wine in a taste room. Well, congratulations okay. on that award, that's Thanks. fantastic. Yeah. I'll tell you, this wine actually inspired this dish right okay. here. He talks about the four varietals of grapes, and um, I just knew we had to have a meat product that really stood up to the characteristics of this particular wine. So um, the short rib has kind of been one of the uh, proteins that kind of has taken the spotlight as of late. Um, a lot of uh, high profile chefs are doing short ribs, so we wanted to do one here to, to pair with our award winning wine. Um, so you have four varietal of grapes and I have four varietal of uh, mushrooms here. I have cremini, um. portobello mushrooms, oysters, and large button mushrooms as well. Um, just rendered down actually in our wine just to secrete all the essence of the mushrooms um, some um, carrots and um, some shallot in there. And then we just slow braise the short ribs for about two and a half hours and just let those juices kind of permeate throughout the whole dish. Wow. So I can't wait to try it. And I think that the secret of these flavors coming out uh, mm -hmm. that much? Actually, it's, uh, we, the, the rub is uh, coriander, a little cracked black pepper, um, and a little brown sugar. Um, the secret to this is we actually put these on the grill first. So okay. if you ever come here when we're doing short ribs, you can probably smell it through the entrance. So when you we're get that nice caramelization exactly. on the outside. Before we roast before it. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you put meat in the oven, it tends to sweat out all the flavor. So we sear it right on the short ribs. Uh, all right, let's try this wine first. Uh, so what, what are we pairing it with? He's a Heritage, okay. Heritage 2009. All right. You can smell a little bit of mm. the mushroom yes, in there. Exactly, That's exactly. fantastic. 
you can already smell some herb over there. Yes. It's mm -hmm. coming into yes. Mm. A little tobacco. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> yeah. First of all, the food is great. You guys can, I'm going to finish this. <laughs> so good. Well, it's funny, when I first came here, and um, for the first 30 days, I just tried all the wines because you have to know that it's the right fit. And I tell you, going the progression of tasting the wines, and then I had this one at the end, it was no question where I wanted to be for the next couple years of my life. Just, Pairing food with this guy's wines is probably, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. It's, you know, it, we're talking about wine preparation, the attention of the blending, mm -hmm. etc. But you got how much is important then to have something like that, which is a complex preparation mm -hmm. uh, because it put together a lot of compounds to create the, the uh, the creation. It's a layering right? process. Yeah, Very exactly. similar to one. It's a lot of depth in these in both products. And the brown sugar on there, you, you never would have noticed it had you not said it, but it just it blends perfectly with exactly. the and tobacco mm -hmm. and the earthiness of mm -hmm. the wine and then the cumin is this that nice smoky flavor that pairs well with the yes. tobacco taste. It's really fantastic. Exactly. Really good. And the mushrooms. And there is an acidity level of the wine mm -hmm. which is perfectly working out the with uh, the taste of the food. Sure. So it's not just a, a matter exactly. of uh, flavors and combination of it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question about content of acidity, sugar, fat, mm -hmm. uh, tannin, is all. We get all of that on the tongue. Yes. So the salty, the sweet, the mm -hmm. everything, it's fantastic. In the bottom layer that it gives it that depth is the fact that the marbleization of that short rib actually allows the food pairing with the wine to kind of stay enveloped in your palate a little bit longer, right. but then wash away. Well, I'm looking at it and there is, I can see that you do have a layer on there with the smokiness. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely incredible. And there's something else in there that I'm picking up that I, no, I don't quite, quite, why I tasted that. There's, there's shallot. You have shallot. shallot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Really good. Do you do the mushrooms in a separate? Yes. Okay. Because mm -hmm. they've got a crispness about them, but oh, not yeah. like the two hour yeah, phrasing yeah. process mm -hmm. that you've put the mm -hmm. mushrooms to. Really good. Yeah, they're hating me for it in the kitchen, but it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, it really does. Because you know, typically you'll put all the veggies in, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. people do like a pot roast or whatnot, mm -hmm. but this is really good. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Very moving nice. on. I said I am gonna finish this. Oh, well, maybe yeah. not right now, but <laughs> okay. I'm gonna finish okay. this. I'll tell them to the souffle. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're moving on to dessert. Yes. So tell us what we're drinking and eating. I'm, I'm like super excited about this one. Mm -hmm. I can't decide whether I'm excited about the dessert more or the, <laughs> or the port that we're gonna be having. So. All right. You go first. Okay. <laughs> uh, port, port style. The the name of this one is Arabelos. Uh, it is made uh, with uh, Turiga Nacional and Tintacao plus Chambersen. Okay. Um, classic uh, uh, port style, so fortification in maceration of the s grape. So explain the fortification and the aging process because that's kind of key to port. Yeah, what I do is uh, um, uh, on the Turiga Nacional, I uh, run the fermentation till half and then I fortify it with, uh, with the alcohol. Um, so that we can reach the 17.5-18% uh, of uh, alcohol and a high residual sugar. Uh, on the Tita Cow, I run the fermentation till the end and then I fortify, so I have less sugar and more alcohol. So I'm preparing different base, like uh, it's like to be in the kitchen when you have a lot of compound, then you can go straight to the target, and it's easy because you can uh, blend this with. You can have different percentages, mm -hmm. and you can go right where you want to go. Awesome. So I keep as for all the wine, I keep everything separate till 15 days before the bottling, and then we uh, we do the blend trials. In wow. uh, this, the secret for this port is that. I'm aging it in the bourbon barrels. That's what I was waiting for him to say. <laughs> coming, coming from Bowman Distillery in Fredericksburg. So we, uh, we know the guy over there a week 
later, then they empty the, the barrel of bourbon. We're gonna dare buy the barrels and fill the barrels with wine and leave it for a year or a year and a half. Uh, that gives a total different background uh, to, the, to the port and it is probably the, uh, the most important key factor uh, that made this sport so enjoyable. Uh, every, and it is probably the best, one of the best selling wine in a tasting room. Wow. Even if it is eight, almost 18%. So we usually now. think of a port as an after dinner drink, uh, correct? Yes, we usually, and, and it's right, uh, because 18% of alcohol, high residual sugar, it is something you don't want. You don't you want to start off yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably in, but it's good. We started in. It's it's good with dessert, with a specific dessert, and uh, and why not after dinner, just uh, sipping it uh, whenever. And and a lot of men like it with cigars, believe it or not. The, yes. The taste of the the port and the smell of the cigar really complement each other. So I can't wait to know what kind, what kind of supply are we having. Well, we're actually going to, and I'm just in awe of the complexity and the time and the patience that it takes to, to produce the port. You know, people wouldn't think about the bourbon barrels and things of that when they think of wine. But um, once again, Simone, just like the complexity of that, um, I actually was taught this souffle by a, a legendary pastry artist, Jacques Torres, at La Sur in New York. So he happened to let me have a souffle recipe on loan. So I hope I do it. I hope I do it justice today. Um, actually, it's a uh, we call it our chocolate covered strawberry um, souffle, wow. which uh, our wild strawberries are taken down and uh, married with pectin, pectin powder to make into a jelly, which has to sit 24 hours, and then we can actually incorporate it that into our egg white, our tempered egg white to make a tight meringue. And we mold those two together. Do you melt it down, back down at all, or you just put it in there no, solid like that? No, just solid like really? that. Really? Um, Jacques, who is a Mason pastry chef, spent about eight months with me just teaching me the crafts of working with desserts and fresh fruit. So, um, and the great thing about souffles is, uh, and what the biggest thing he told me about souffles is, is that timing is the key, and the timing of souffles coming to the table is, um, you know, it's one thing that a lot of restaurants. They try to stay away from those things, um, but they're here, temperamental. <laughs> exactly, very temperamental. But here at Potomac Point Winery, um, we can do a souffle in seven minutes, fresh hot to <laughs> the table. I know he talked about timing. Oh, the timing! Table. Timing yeah. is everything. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Well, and wow, that's beautiful. A classic. Thank you. Risen beautifully. A classic souffle presentation, okay. and I have to. Mm. Okay, and do this for you how we present it here at Potomac Point Winery. We actually open the top of the souffle, we take our chocolate sauce, and we pour it right inside of the souffle. Oh my goodness. So, once again, you have some complexity. You have the light airiness and the strawberry taste of the souffle, and then the chocolate sauce gives you a little bit of depth that can stand up to the port wine. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. I love it. I gotta try this port first. It's very smooth. Really smooth. Mm. <laughs> wow. That's very good. It's almost got the texture of real fresh berries, like mm -hmm. the berry was cut up mm -hmm. in it. That's incredible. That's very good. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah cheers. cheers guys. Excellent. Cheers. I'm actually really impressed because port sometimes can be really heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it does have a syrup, if you, if you look at the legs on it, it does have a little bit of a sure. syrupy look to mm -hmm. it, but it's not heavy. No, and you know, the, the, th the secret of is uh, there are untopping barrels. Mm -hmm. um, that means that all the water inside the wine is, wine is 95% water, right? All the water there is evaporating out from the barrels, and we have a concentration, constant concentration on the on those bourbon barrels, which breathing are breathing more than the regular barrels, wine barrels. So we lo we lose 
for each barrel a lot of water and everything inside is becoming concentrated. The smoothness you feel is because we don't concentrate only alcohol and aromatics, but all the compounds of the wine are concentrated, so, so you feel there is more complexity, mm -hmm. right? More concentration. Kind of like a reduction. Wow. Exactly, okay. exactly the same thing. Man. Yeah, and you know, bourbon has that bite to it, and it can yeah. burn at the back of your throat. Yeah. So when you talk about you know fortifying with bourbon, mm -hmm. yeah. whatnot, you would expect that there would be kind of a bite in the back mm -hmm. of your throat. But this is so smooth, and yeah. it's not heavy, and you know, with the lightness and the airiness of, of the souffle, it's just a perfect pairing. Yes. Absolutely great. Amazing. And the chocolate sauce is fantastic. Yes, the chocolate sauce. What kind of chocolate do you use? Uh, good mm. uh. <laughs> And is there anything in this chocolate sauce? Is it just straight chocolate? Actually, we use 40% uh, cream Okay. also. So um, kind of like a ganache, but like runnier, ganache. runnier than oh, a ganache. Yeah. Um, once again, uh, thank you, Jack, for teaching me all these great tasty tricks. Mm -hmm. um, this chocolate sauce is kind of foolproof. Um, like I said, the people at Lucer are amazing, known for their desserts, and so now here at Potomac Point, we're known for, for our desserts as well. So yes. You definitely are. In our wine, great wine. Yeah, but I mean, really, it's, everything has to, this is the perfect, uh, you know, uh, finish for a wine, and for a wine. You have to drink it by having great food. You, you, you may have great wine, but uh, listen, there is nothing, I mean, you can have a glass of wine, great wine possible, and that is it. But when you actually eat this with great food, then... It's an experience. Yes. It's exactly. Which is, I think, where you all are trying to go yes. Yes. with the food here. So yes. I know there's a bistro here, mm -hmm. but now we're expanding the menu, we're yeah. changing things around. What's changing going on? Menu. Tell well, us, tell us, Chef. I mean, you know, like I said, uh, for 30 days we've kind of been talking back and forth about uh, making the food a little more upscale, still very rustic and Mediterranean to complement um, the wines. Uh, the wines have been on stage for five years and have kind of graduated and we're now known for our great wines, um, great winemaker. So now we have to play catch up in the bistro and the Grand Cru is our full scale catering facility where you've seen the beautiful grounds that we have here, the new vineyards that we're planning. Very Mediterranean uh, style. Exactly. And you, and you grew or you worked in Sicily. Oh yeah. So originally yeah. from Italy. So we've got a very Mediterranean yes, there is, there style there going on here. There right. is connection going So on, are you so. kind of Playing around with Mediterranean styles oh, with your definitely, cuisine here? Definitely, definitely. Um, we're actually going to have a little retail kiosk where we'll do gnocchi, we'll do marinated artichokes hearts, we'll actually make the buffalo mochi from the curd. So we're going to do a lot of authentic things. We actually have the out, coming out today a, uh, a rosemary skillet bread, which is sort of a focaccia type style bread. Mm -hmm. And we also have a uh, authentic ricotta salat cheesecake that we'll be rolling out pretty soon. So uh -huh. yeah, all things Mediterranean here at Potomac Point. Oh. Oh, yeah. So now we we're talking about food and wine pairings, mm -hmm. and I know you guys offer that here. But is it can we come every week? Is it something that you do on special occasions? What well, we we do in special occasion, we have uh, uh, several winemaker dinner going on along the year, and uh, we have a pairing uh, in a special event like San Valentine. Mm -hmm. uh, so you actually can check out online on the website or by calling the tasting room mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know being updating on on our event and food pairing. We probably will start to do uh, food pairing more often because as you said it's more an experience mm -hmm. and uh, when we are talking about Virginia wineries it must be an experience. Sure. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, now that uh, we uh, are solid in uh, in our you know food preparation. We can uh, show everybody like uh, our creation, wine and food, and you know teaching mm -hmm. and uh, suggesting, sure. educating, and educating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, guys, this has been really fun. Yeah, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to end this interview because I want to go over there and finish that food. Okay. <laughs> so it's been lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. My it's going to be fantastic. Let's yes. cheers again. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. cheers.